have a touch the pad. Yeah. In the world, fused. Now then crew and welcome back to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now I wasn't too sure whether I was going to bother filming this bit or not but you might remember that when uh, stunt girl Lily uh, aka tool girl Lily drove the little Honda ATC 200 big red around the paddock on that test ride the fuel tank was leaking petrol and uh, well it needs to be welded up and I had lots of different suggestions about how to weld up the fuel tank and how to prepare it so it doesn't explode uh, before you start to grind it or weld it. So, what my method is basically is to empty all the petrol out and then rinse the tank out with water with a hose pipe for about half an hour, leave it all flushing through and then tip all the water out and then let it basically everything inside the tank evaporate away in the sunshine. That's the plan. Hopefully it's going to work. It's worked in the past. If it doesn't work, well you'll see it on camera. There's going to be a loud bang and maybe some smoke and flames and bits and pieces, but fingers crossed that won't happen. Um, so the tank itself is here and you can't really make out the holes too well, but we'll do a close up and have a little look. Now I did find, rummaging around outside, because we're in the, in the process of moving workshops at the moment, we've got a nice sheet of stainless steel. So I'll rub a piece out of that and we'll weld it in. Now as regards the extent of the, uh, the fuel tank that needs to be you know, cut away and replaced. Uh, I did this to an old uh, XT500 tank not too long ago. We'll have to find out because I need to grind back some of the rusty areas and just see how bad it is because it isn't just where the seat used to rub. There are some scabby bits further up but I'm hoping that they're going to be okay. Right, let's take a look. Okay, right, so we've got... Um, this is definitely a hole. And as you can see, I can poke the scriber through it. So we've got a massive hole there. I did see it. There we are. There's another one there, look. There you go. And I'm sure there are. There's another one. There's quite a few around this fuel tank. Maybe some of them haven't. Oh, there's one, look. Hang on. I can pretty much poke holes. There they are, look. Pretty much. <laughs> All the way through. Oh, we've got them around there as well, look. There's one. So it is pretty knackered to be honest. Right in there. Nope. Yes. 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 Well, that's a pretty bad area. Around there doesn't seem too bad. Maybe there's a hole. I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. So, I anticipate the area we're going to cut out is essentially going to be something like along here, roughly, and then maybe down there, and we'll try and keep it the same both sides, and then maybe, you know, along the bottom somehow. Because it's really important, I think, when you're doing this kind of a job, that you cut out all of the rot. You don't want to try and weld to something like this, which is already half rotten, because your welding is going to be porous, and it's going to be very difficult to weld. It's going to be a pain in the ass. So, if you can just go that bit further out, then at least you've got some decent metal to weld to. So, first job, I think, is to cut that out. Jeez. Here we go. Now, don't forget, this only has to be functional. I'm not too concerned about how it looks. Unfortunately, the vast majority of it is hidden by the seat anyway, so it's not really a problem. So it doesn't look fantastic, does it? We've got quite a lot of sort of peppered holes all over that area where the, where the seat is essentially rubbing away at the fuel tank when you've been riding. It's taken all the paint off and then, of course, it's been left out in the rain numerous times. The water's got between the seat and the tank and it's slowly corroded its way through. So this is rusted from the outside in as opposed to sometimes fuel tanks rust from the inside out. Okay, well I'd better give it a sniff test. It doesn't really smell of petrol anymore. There isn't really 
bit of water left in there, but nothing serious. Yes, I could fill the fuel tank with water, but it won't stay in there very long because it's full of holes. So we're going to have to cut this out without any water in it. Right, well, here we go. As Eric would say, safety third. Okay, now we've got pretty damn close to the inside skin of the tank, so I'm going to have to run a, a ride a weld across that as well, because as you can see, we've pretty much got all the way through. Well done, Andy. That's all right. With a MIG, you can fix anything. Sneaky peek inside the fuel tank. Well, it's a bit hard to tell down the seam, but on the camera at least, because it's a bit wet. But saying that. You know, it's a pretty old machine, isn't it? It's not too bad, really, for the inside. That side's slightly better, but it's only really sort of surface rust on the inside. So maybe I'll get some of that cream and line it. Because give it a good sort of, once it's all welded up, give it a really good, put some ball bearings in there and give it, put it on the shaker. Give it a good, uh, good clean out on the inside. Cool, yeah. So, unfortunately, I didn't quite realise but how close that inner, inner panel got to the outer panel down here, so we'll have to weld that up as well. But the first job is going to be to clean all this area up here with the flap disc. Cool. And I'll probably do up here as well, get rid of all this rust. Give it a really good clean round. We didn't blow up, that's for sure, which is good. So the next thing I need to do, basically, is make up or cut out a piece of steel, that stainless steel, that's going to basically fill that hole. Now I'm not too concerned about making it all curved and nice to match the shape of the tank. I just need this fuel tank to keep petrol in it and not leak out. That's the important part for me. So, 
bit of rust under there, but again, it's all superficial. <sighs> Better do some marking out, I suppose. This is going to be easier than I thought it was going to be. So what I need to do now is just mark out around there, but I'm going to make it slightly bigger, and then the piece is going to go inside the tank and then pull forward. So the lip is going to, this, if this was the new piece, it will sit basically behind the original tank, and then there'll be a weld line. I'm going to state my hands like all red. Uh, Honda red, actually. Uh, we'll then weld down here. Rather than trying to do a butt joint, which is quite difficult to weld, if you do a bit of an overlap, then there's a lot more metal to take the heat, and there's less chance of burning a hole in it. Plus the overlap's on the inside of the tank, so it doesn't really matter, you can't see it anyway. Right, need a pen. Okay, we'll make it slightly larger to start off with, we can always cut it down if need be. So we'll leave, well, in actual fact, we can't do an overlap, well, not all the way, on the bottom of the tank. Because as you can see, this inner panel comes right up to it, so we can't slide it down the back. But we can just trim a piece out, and then we can actually have it overlapped on these other bits. So when we come to weld this, it's fine, because it's double thickness anyway. Cool. and then we'll flip it over and I'll put a weld line along where I actually accidentally cut too far through. Okay. Right. Can that all work? We can always always trim it down a bit more later on and make it too small. Got to start again. Okay, more cutting. Damn. Awesome, we've got the bit we need. I bet it won't fit though. Let's take a look. I don't forget, this is a quick fix. I don't think you'd find Orange County choppers doing a job like I do. They take a lot more time doing this kind of stuff. But essentially, that is going to fit on the inside. We need to, it needs a bit, of, a bit of a bend on it, a bit of a curve on it if we're going to get really excited. And then it's going to sit behind, and then we can weld obviously over there, a bit of an overlap, rather than trying to do a butt joint, much easier if the metal is actually sat behind, because uh, there's more metal, it takes the heat easier, and it doesn't blow a hole in the metal, or less chance of it anyway. And I'll be running 0.8 MIG wire, which is meant for much heavier stuff than welding this thin tin. That's all I have. So we're going to slide that in there, once we get it all shaped up right, we're going to slide it on the inside, probably weld a couple of little studs to here, old screws or nails so we can hold it and pull it out and get it so it sits nice and neat or as neat as we can get it on there. So you could just weld it on the outside but I think that looks crap. If you weld it on the inside then you've got the op opportunity to put some filler on there if you really wanted to make a better job. On the outside, nah, looks a bit naff doesn't it I think. Inside, much better. That's my opinion, your call. Okay, so where's the old piece? There we go. Now, I'm not a panel beater, I'm a mechanic, so you've got to bear with me. So the ends need to be rolled. It wants to go that way around for a start. Like that look. So we need to put a bit of a bit of a bend, just a little bit of a bend on the ends. Here we can do that. Check it in the vise, give it a bend, no problem. Right. If I had a sandbag, I could lay it in the sandbag and just give it a bit of a, a bit of a beat and it would give it that, that kind of a shape to it, but I haven't got a sandbag, so I can't do that. Did that at school when I was uh, learning to do metal work many, many years ago. Or we just weld it in flat, just put some bevels on the end, some bends on the end, so we can get to there. Just weld it in nice and flat. Doesn't really matter, does it? Because it's going to be hidden by the seat anyway. Probably we'll just weld it in flat. Right, I'll put some bends on the end and we'll go from there. Right, just so I don't get too confused, the arrow tells us up. So remind me if I put it in. The wrong way around, okay? Right, it needs a bit of a bend on there. It's all very, very approximate, isn't it? It is stainless, it's not easy to bend. 
maybe a little bit more. There we go. Right, the same on this side. Okay. Right, let's take another look. The way you're doing this kind of job, you're constantly sort of removing it, moving it around, making adjustments, you know. It's only got a very slight curve on there. Very, very small. So maybe, what, you know, I'm expecting to chop a fair bit off it. And this video probably will, you know, end up being a bit shorter than what the full video is, because I'll, I'll do some edits. But you sort of get a rough idea of how it's going to sit. It's, not, it's actually not that far off. It's amazing how you can, you know, once we get some little bit metal, uh, you know, nails or whatever pull, welded on there, we can pull it out and it'll give it some shape. Wow. Okay. That fits better than I thought it was going to do, actually. Assuming, of course, we can get it back out again without cutting our fingers. There we go. So it sort of fits fine on the outside, which is an indication that it really does bend, needs to be a little bit further in. Yeah, okay. So I'll do that. I was just thinking, you know, we've got a bit of a dent in the side of the tank here. While we can get in, why not let's give it a bit of a tap and see if it comes out. Stick steel actually, this stuff. Nearly. Need a bit of wood, don't we, to put in there and then bend it across. Okay, maybe, just maybe. I <laughs> said point one of a litre additional capacity. Okay, let's see where we're at with that piece of metal. That was worth spending two minutes doing, wasn't it? Okay, so we're probably bent in far enough at the top, looking at that, but the, but the bottom part is still a bit wide, so I need to alter the angle a bit. I can always trim some more off this if I need to later on. Yeah, I would say just a bit more of a bend, a bit more, less of a taper, which is odd because it Looks about right to me. Yeah. The wonders of editing. So once you've got your little nails rubbed on there, you can. Oh, see, it's not too bad, is it? Needs that bit pulling out. Now that we've bent it back. But, um, yeah, I don't think we're far off. I know you're going to be laughing. Once I get older than me, it's amazing what you can do. Right, so we had a gap up there, so that needs folding back out, and that needs to be made a bit more of a steeper fold, because it is a lot more of an angle than that one, isn't it? All done by sight. Right, see if this is any better. Oh, a spider! Ha! You're going to get very warm shortly, spider, if you don't evacuate. That is looking pretty good. Okay, so it just needs to be splayed out a bit at that end, and maybe a little bit more at this end. And then, oh, we can get it welded in. 
Pokely Dokely. Right, we need somewhere good for our, for our ground, so I'm just going to clean some of the paint off there and put our clamp on that bit. Okay, now there are some places where this is already really well lined up, so I'm just going to just put a couple of spot welds to hold that in place. Sorry camera. Yes, I know. Right, that's good. See, it's already blown a little tiny hole. So we'll just go down a notch on the power. Nothing we can't fill up later on. Turn the wire speed up a bit. There we go. Right, now we need some a couple of nails to weld onto here to be able to pull it out, to be able to sort of reduce these gaps right down. We can even stuff something down the inside of the tank and push it out if we need to. But I want to get these to an absolute minimum down the sides. The top's not looking too bad at all. There we go. A bolt. So we'll stick that on there. Now obviously that will be removed later on, but it gives us a bit more you know, leverage on the panel to pull it out and get another one to the other side. There we go. Cool there. Yeah? Right, I'm just going to get a block of wood to hold the whole thing up so I can see what's going on better. Much better. Right, so let's put some spot wells across the top now. And let's get some mold grips to go on there. Cool, that's actually a really, really good fit along the top there. Where's my hammer? Cool, yeah? Okay, well I reckon I can go for a good nice weld across the bottom now. I say good and nice weld. I'm not a professional welder, not on thin tin like this. This is the hardest one because this is actually a butt joint down the bottom, which I was trying to avoid doing, but hey, such is life. <laughs> Nearly made a hole.
Okay. Right, so let's move the old clamp. Get rid of the old mole grips now. Okay. And I think the part of attack is we'll get the top bit welded as well, and then we'll get those end pieces bent out as far as we can at least. This side doesn't look too bad. This side may be a bit more difficult. And then I can weld around the ends. Okay. I don't know how much bit of a benefit these are anymore, really. I seem to have got over that bit. Oh, earth clamp, funky. Grommets. Well, I don't think it's looking too bad. I mean, yes, it got a little bit messy down here, but you know, I reckon it's sealed. Top weld, which is the overlap rather than the butt weld, is f a far better weld because you can get a lot more heat into the metal before it actually blows a hole. Remember, I'm using 0.8 MIG wire, which is quite thick for doing this kind of work. Okay, so the next job really is to minimize this gap here and then run the weld around the edges, but I don't believe there's any need for these to be here anymore, they're sort of in the way, so we'll get rid of those. Ah, there's one. Shouldn't roll them on quite so good, should I? That one's on really well. There we go. Hookly duckly. Ooh, we're sort of three quarters of the way there as we go to the welding, aren't we? This is the important bit, though. Okay, let me find something that I can poke down the inside and just give that a little tap so it goes further out. Okay, things are looking a lot better, so I'm just going to give the outsides a bit more of a tap uh, to fill in that gap. Now on this side it's starting to crease up, so I'm just going to put a little cut line in there to, to get rid of that excess metal. Easy tiger. Coolio, as we go around, we'll, always, we'll be tapping it closer and closer. So we'll start off and we'll just weld this bit here and that and that cut line that I just put in there. Because all this can be ground back anyway, it's not, a, not really an issue. Okay, round there, and then we'll just keep tapping it in and welding it. Right, you're gonna have to go back on your trolley because you're too close where you are now, and it'll damage the camera. Right, so that's that side done. Not too bad, I reckon. Hopefully, no holes. We'll find out when we fill it with water. Okay. 
Now for this side. You see okay? There you go. It may not look pretty, but it should work. Okay, so we'll start off with the worst bit of welding. I look at this is 0.8 mig wire working on about one mil steel. That was really good down there. I'm quite I'm quite pleased with that bit. That was actually the worst part, of the worst hardest bit to weld up. But anyway, we got there in the end. And then coming round, pretty good along the top. So you've got to place your bets as to where you think it's going to leak. I'll go around once again so you've got an idea. There's bound to be a leak. There has to be a leak. There's no way it's going to be watertight, first tight. I reckon down there could be pretty bad. Eh, maybe. doesn't take a lot, but if I fill it with water, then I can easily just put a little spot weld over wherever the leak may be. Right, let's go and fill it with water and find out. Right, hose pipe's going in. I've sealed off the drain underneath of the fuel tap. Watch out for any leaks. I'll go and turn it on. Well, can you see any yet? Yet. Not yet. Oh, it's looking pretty good, isn't it? We're nearly at the top. Holy crap. If that's sealed without any holes at all. Yes! Fantastic. Good job. Right, back to the bench. Well, I think you're as surprised as I am. No leaks. Pretty impressive. It's probably the first time I've ever welded up any kind of a tank that hasn't had at least one leak. I've had to just put a little bit of weld on there, plug it up, job done. This time round, sealed. Look at that. It's still got water in it. Now obviously it needs a little bit of cleaning up and I'm going to grind off those little tabs that were used for those bolts. But you know, it's not bad. And what's it cost me? 50 cents, maybe a dollar in gas. Bit of old stainless steel eye kicking around. And maybe what, 10% of a slick disc on my grinder? Nothing. Nothing at all, really. And it's made that tank usable again. And I was quite confident I could do this without any problems at all. Yes, I could have been maybe a bit more accurate making the plate to fit. Um, but, you know what I mean? It'll be just fine. Maybe one day I'll come across a better tank for it, one that's, you know, 
not rusty, and I'll just do a swap out. But for now, I need to get this vehicle working so that I can use it, because it's actually got a project. It's going to be used down at the new property where the workshop is, just to drag an old trailer around and help me set up the workshop. So it's going to be working for a living, not just a bit of fun, although it is a bit of fun. Okay, crew, well, if you enjoyed this video, why not click on the subscribe button? You'll see a little gear icon come up. Click on the gear icon, and then you can tick the box and turn on notifications. And our friends down at YouTube, well, they're going to send you an email as and when I upload any new videos. If you're on a smart device, just ring the bell. Okay, you'll also find me on Facebook, Instagram, Google+, and Twitter. Feel free to communicate through any of those portals. However, if you don't mind, first point of contact by the comments down the bottom on YouTube. There's also a Patreon page that you can access from the main Andy Mechanic YouTube page, the home page, little icon in the banner, click on the Patreon. Uh, I'll put a link down the bottom as well for you. Go on there, you can read all about the history of the channel, how it came to be, because it was a bit odd, uh, up and coming projects, and of course the profiles of all the tool girls that have been on the show over the last 18 months or so. And they'll keep coming, I'm sure. Uh, if you do decide to make a donation, or become a patron, as we call it, then feel free, uh, much appreciated obviously, uh, but please only send through what you can afford. I don't want you sending through stuff that you can't afford uh, and causing yourselves problems. That wouldn't be fair at all, but if you do send some money through, it is much appreciated and you will get a, uh, a shout out on our next mail call video. Alright chaps, well I've got an ATC to put back together, after I've painted this fuel tank obviously. I'll see you around. Cheers. Over and out. And we get the up again. Oh.